What is up? Shakers and Groovers, Shit Show Disco here. Now today we're in the studio for the music that made you with the one, the only, Talina. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Oh, I'm fantastic. Now, uh, how's everything been traveling? Obviously the world's a bit upside down at the moment. How's things? Yeah, things are good right now. I'm really happy. Um, but obviously it's been nice to have a bit of a break, a big, quite a big break actually. Yeah. But it's been good. No, that's good. I think... Um, it's nice to have a little reset and yep. kind of get things back into gear. <laughs> you know it. That's right. Now, uh, for those of you that uh, don't know T, uh, obviously she has a few cheeky bangers out. If you uh, jump onto Spotify, uh, Boots and Cats, Club Sweat. What's the name of uh, what's the name <laughs> of the mixtape that you're on for that? The workout. Oh, the series? workout series. Yes. Yeah, nice. So pretty much tunes that you can just. Yeah, work just, out too. <laughs> <laughs> but um, if you guys aren't uh, aren't familiar with it, make sure you jump on Spotify, type in the name that you can see up there, <laughs> and uh, all of her catalog will come up of uh, cheeky little bangers. Club Sweat, the best, best family ever. Yeah, best fam ever. Yeah, that's right. Nah, so uh, jump on there, check that out. It's a banger. It's kind of like it is very much a tech house track. Yep. But I know. I like. I'm down with it. Yeah. I'm not usually like the biggest tech, tech house. Like, yeah. Listener. You like your disco. Yeah, yeah, a bit of disco, a bit of, bit of hip hop, a bit of all that. But like, don't get me wrong, I love, I love a 3 a.m. dance floor. Yes, of course. <laughs> Who doesn't miss that? Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> definitely. <laughs> we're not going into that right now. <laughs> uh, we will. We'll delve into that later. Yeah, okay, fine. Now, uh, how long have you been producing music and DJing for? Um, I have been DJing for about seven years, seven and a half years now. Um, but producing music, it's always on and off, but I think I started or I got Ableton maybe like five years ago now yeah. and it's just up and down, you know, you have your periods yeah. as, you know, some creatives would know four months on, four months off or like, yeah. you know, two weeks and then six months out of the studio, then two weeks back in. It's hard. It's just, it's depending what is going on in your life. Yeah. And yeah, it's been hard through COVID obviously, cause I get my creativity from my shows and meeting people and yeah. Yeah, so. No, it's hard. It's hard. It is. So but it's good as well. Have you uh, have you studied or you've just learned it all yourself? Yeah, or? so I started out with the cracked version of Ableton. Yeah, girl. <laughs> I, think everyone, <laughs> I think everyone does Haven't that. I mean, yeah. no, nah. I mean, <laughs> no. I, am I allowed to say that? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think it was more so like I just wanted to see what I could do. Yep. And I just sat in the studio with um, some friends. Shout out to Treeborn. He definitely showed me a lot. If you remember Treeborn, he yep. used to um, play around Surface and all that back in the day. And um, yeah, I definitely looked up to him and he helped me out um, in the studio yep. and showed me a few things and how to get around Ableton. And then of course the homie Jordan Burns showed me a few things and whatnot. But I also did um, three, a three year bachelor degree yeah, at uh, um, Griffith Unit. Yeah, Griffith University. Yeah. I did a um, bachelor in multimedia, majoring in music programming and production. Oh wow! Yeah, and then I moved to when I moved to Melbourne for like a couple months. I, I lived there for about eight months. I did a um, mix and mastering school in South Bank, which was really cool with yeah. Abbey Road Institute. Oh, cool! So it kind of just like because I graduated that um, Griffith course maybe two years ago now yeah so then i had like a year break where i just produced produce produce wow. and release and then i thought i want to be able to you know really mix and master my own tunes because at the start you know you just produce music you send yeah. it off and mix yeah. down and master you do what you can but i was like why don't i try to do it all so then i went and studied that and it was super fun i learned so much out of it so now i'm like i like to mix and write music as I go because it's just so much easier that's rad I think yeah. um so I was talking to a health club Lucas who just like released some new tunes and he was saying that the thing that's taken him longest is he wanted to mix down his own music yeah not so much to like be like yeah I can do it all but you're you know what you want yeah that like, yeah that's what I wanted to learn and mm. I learned it <laughs> I, learned, I learned it yeah like, oh, that's perfect I mean it makes it easier the process and everything and the yeah. more you understand with your programs and um your doors and all that I think that 
the process just becomes quicker yeah and your quality becomes better definitely, you know what i mean definitely 100 percent. i think sometimes uh people's music gets lost when it gets sent off to someone to mix it can yes especially if like they've said oh i've mixed it myself and then you get the master back and it's like that doesn't sound right yeah. because the mix isn't clean yeah definitely. you know what i mean so you gotta be gotta be careful around that stage of production and it's hard too like some people want their baseline driving some people want their drums heavier yeah. like it's such a or punchier and all that yeah kind of it's stuff. picky everyone's different but i think yeah if you learn how to mix your own music i feel like you know when you send it off for a master if you don't master yourself you know that it's going to come back and you're going to be happy with it yeah, because definitely. you know your mix is clean and yeah and saving a bit of money 100 yeah mixed mixed downs are very expensive yeah <laughs> and then i guess you can bang out more <gasps> yeah and you know do that kind of stuff that's yeah. sick that's um it's such a, so interesting to hear you know obviously studying at griffith and yeah. studying down at abbey yeah and then it was cool pushing hard of just like making music yeah it was hard in um university because like i was learning on logic yeah. at the uni and so obviously was that because they recommended that that was just a part of the program yeah. they, wow. they're saying you can go home and work in your door but i was like i have to go back and like show them my logic project, project. that i've done it, it was too much whereas like at abbey um they used i'm pretty sure we did ableton i think we did a bit of both but it was cool because i could take in my laptop and like show them what i'm working on and use those type of tracks whereas university was completely different like i was learning robotics like websites everything at yeah. once it was so full on and it was more like the history of music as well oh wow but yeah that's why i did that school in melbourne just to like help me a bit more because it's more of a niche yeah like i'm really creative as it is so like i thought doing production um was good for my branding and djing and everything yeah. like that but on top of that i thought i can actually write and try mix and master why don't yeah. i just do the whole engineer thing yeah, why <laughs> like, don't i just do it why not you know not just make music and send it off like obviously it's a money saver but yeah i like to learn yeah definitely I, if, yeah it's rewarding and it's better to kind of have a full mastery of the whole craft instead of just putting a few kicks and a baseline 100%. on and sending it off and being like make me sound great yeah 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 no that's really cool so you've been working on heaps of music then djing what came first did you play shows and then produce or DJing? Yeah. Yeah. So I was 17 and I bought decks for my birthday. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, I just want to learn. And it was really strange how it all started. I never was like, I want to be a DJ. Like I was still in school and yeah. it was just, it was crazy. Like I got decks and then I had a few people that um helped me like learn how to use the decks yep. it, like uh shout out to zach mcanelli back in the day <laughs> oh he, wow yeah yeah, well, yeah that's a big he throwback. used to take me along to like electric candy parties yep. and um all the formal after parties and stuff like that and i'd just get behind the decks and play just for experience yep. and um it just kind of grew from there and then i realized i just loved mixing music and i felt like at home in front of yeah people and dancing with them you yeah. know what i mean it was more of like a vibe thing not like i want to do this forever it's just like i love this yeah and i can make an income from it yeah and then it just became my career and then yeah. seven years later i haven't <laughs> looked back that's sick <laughs> it's so crazy. it's more uh, more feeding your soul and feeding your ego 100 you know, like people want to be like oh i want to be a dj no i never yeah. never i've never seen it like that like yeah it's more so i've never wanted attention i've never yeah you know, attention, uh, respect over attention always. Yeah, yeah. And so that's how I kind of have always kept my groundings with being in this industry yeah. because, you know, I, I love what I do and I don't see it as work. Yeah. And if so, your heart's in it, you never work a day in your life. hundred percent without music. I don't know where I'd be. So that's very true. I, I think that's a lot of people for, can agree yeah. with that. Yeah. Now, uh, talking about your first gigs DJing how old were you 17 I was 17 and I was a resident at Envy oh <laughs> everyone remembers Envy yeah, and Broad Broad Beach. Beach, yeah. yep. that was the hot spot I swear it was so fun every time I'd go out I'd meet new people obviously I wouldn't go out oh, I have a story about that so like obviously I was 17 and I was underage I'd have to take my own controller in because i didn't know how to use cdjs yet yeah, yeah. so i would like get escorted in set up my controller um and play and pack it up and get escorted yeah, out because yeah. like obviously that's the rules yeah. and i never like did all that underage clubbing nothing like no, that like no. a lot of yeah. a lot of people do do at 17 16 what and whatnot but um yeah i waited till i was 18 to go out and and we were like 
nowhere is as good as the vibe I said. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was, I really like enjoyed going out once I turned 18, but it was just different because I was working and then I'd like stay out. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah, I was already in that routine. But I did like lots of parties first and like after parties, birthdays, um, warehouse things yeah. and stuff like that. And then, yeah, I got into the club scene. Um, shout out to James who helped me with that one. And um, yeah, I was playing like six hours, Fridays, Saturdays, every weekend. And yeah. then I moved to, I, I kept doing Envy and then I moved to doing. So you were playing five or six hour sets at Envy? Yeah. So yeah. like I'd open sometimes open to close or just like yeah. the main slot, like depends like what other DJs were playing and yeah. whatnot. But it was a pretty small family back then because seven years ago, like everyone kind of knew each other yeah. around surface and broadly. And I felt like I was really young getting into the scene. So it was, it was exciting. So after like a few months at Envy, I thought, you know, why don't I try a few other places? And then I started playing hip hop and R and B yeah. at Bourbon Bar for like eight, six hours every night. Shout every out <laughs> Bourbon Bar. I know. <laughs> but the thing is like, you got to do all these types of gigs um, to see where you truly want to be. 100%. And at the time, like I was just, I was loving it. Yeah. You know, I'd go to Envy, I'd do like four hours and I'd go drive to surface, pick up my decks, drive to surface yeah. and then go play at Bourbon Bar. And then like, I'd have like one hour left and we'd go hit just before lockout, go to cocktails. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just, it was so fun. Like around the age of 18 and 19, when I was like experiencing all different sounds, genres, clubs. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was cool. But and you kind of like finally worked out your niche market now. I mean, I feel like I'm still evolving and growing yeah. every day and like not rebranding all the time, but like just music is always evolving yeah, and 100%. my love for music is never going to stop growing. It's yeah. always, it's always there. So I love all genres, almost all genres, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like I've played most genres that you hear in different clubs. Yeah. So I'm at the point where I know what I like and yeah. But yeah, thinking back like seven years ago, six years ago, doing all the rounds at all those clubs and going from like three hour, like EDM, big room to like a R and B yeah. old school set. It's just like, it's crazy how much I've done and what I've done to see where I am at today. Do you yeah, know what I mean? And definitely. I look back, I'm like, oh my God, I used to play a five hour R and B set like to completely different crowds. And yeah, it's just cool. Yeah, no, it's cool. I think- The um, journey. Yeah, definitely. I think- <laughs> There's nothing better than an apprenticeship in DJing is getting stuck with those big six, seven hour sets. Yeah. Because you just need to know to be like so all over the shop. I feel like it's different though. Cause like I didn't know, well, not that I didn't know house in techno back then, but if I were to do like a six to seven hour set now, I would like, it'd be different. I'd be taking someone on a journey. That's, that's yeah. what I like about yeah. long sets these days. But back then when I was learning and you know, it was all about like Melbourne bounce and yeah. all that stuff. I feel like. It was just banging out tunes. Yeah, definitely. But that's what I've learned. It's always, you know, your progression is, my progression is my motivation. So that's where I'm, I'm grateful for being in those little clubs back then and yeah. jumping from different like genres, different times of the night. And yeah. yeah, it's cool. You learn a lot. I think the big thing is like me personally, when I'm like playing like full shit shirt disco mode and I'm like, yeah. all right, cool. Like I'm playing house disco and I'll like chuck in some of that stuff. But lately I've been playing at Iku and I've been pretty much playing like a three hour hip hop, like, yeah, <laughs> like that's right. Anderson Pack vibes. Yeah, yeah. And it's just so good to kind of have that, like, like I don't know, just the freedom yeah. to kind of just be like, oh, you know what? I and wanna... then you fall into your own groove and you yeah. kind of forget like where you are. <laughs> and yeah. you're like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Cause it's cool when you can, when you have a long set, you know, like you can mess around and yeah. kind of, it depends if you have got a crowd or not and you want to take people on a journey, but that's how I feel a long set should be. Or yeah. like, especially if like it's an early set, you got to be able to know the time you're playing to and like being yeah. able to play to that certain time and crowd and environment. I think you learn that with long sets and stuff as well. Yeah, definitely. Because if you just jump into like shows where you're like, all right, midnight to 1am, yeah. you kind of don't learn. Yeah, anyone can play the 1am slot. Of, of course. Yeah. You just bang it out. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, obviously, uh, your, your name, producer name is your name. Yes. Was there thought behind that? Did you want to, like, be yourself or was yeah, it Yeah, like that's it, pretty yeah. much. And also because, like, I think my name is very original. So yeah. I wanted to be known as Talina because I felt like it's just going to be representing exactly who I am and what I love. You know, there's no – I was thinking about 
maybe calling myself Wanderlust Ooh. back in the day. Like I was like, okay, I'm going to be a DJ. What the hell? I need to have a name. Yeah. And then like I thought about it for so long and I was like, I'm just going to be myself because I actually really love music and I this could be something and yeah. that'd be cool just to, you know, I don't want to be anyone but myself yeah. unless, you know, creating an alias or whatnot. But yeah. That's yeah, cool. I, just I went like with that. my name. <laughs> I like that because I, like I, me personally, I was like, I want to be someone else. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. See, that's that's the difference. I feel like people will want to like have it like an alias or a yeah. second. It depends. You're you're just shit shirt disco. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. And that's like how you like to be recognized. I, it makes or, me cringe when someone's like, yo, shit shirt. I hate it so much. <laughs> but like, I just kind of, I think about like everything else behind it and like branding and all that kind exactly. of stuff. And, um, it's, it's a business. Yeah. And people comment like, oh, it seems like a label. And I'm like, oh, sick. Or like That's a clothing what you want. label. <laughs> sick. Like I just kind of, um, yeah, I just thought, yeah. why not? <laughs> yeah. I was thinking of names and I was like, oh, look, it was actually too difficult to choose something. And then I was like, Talina, Talina. Helena, maybe I'll just go with my yeah, name. I don't perfect. know. I don't know. No, I like and it. And it just happened. I'm down. Don't you worry. <laughs> now, uh, obviously, you said music has been a massive influence of your life, obviously. Yeah. Now, uh, what kind of music were you listening to in high school when you were growing up and stuff? And I don't mean 17 year old clubbers guide yeah, high yeah. school. <laughs> <laughs> um, I liked dubstep. Yeah. A lot, and I used to like, um, I used to listen to Flume all the time. I think yeah. Flume was a very big inspiration with like my career yep. and just like falling in love with, with music. Yeah. Um, I, you know, you can't blame me. I think flume is very specific oh, and different. So I think that was what was interesting, um, around that time. Cause I was like graduating in 2013, I think, yeah. I think I can't even, but I was before that music was just everything. I, I did piano for seven years piano and keyboard and I did choirs and music and all that and I was into all the musicals and all that so yeah. I mean I can't really just say what like one song or one genre because yeah. I think everything has made me who I am today yeah definitely but yeah like obviously like everyone goes to their little dubstep stages yeah. in like high school and yeah. and whatnot but that was that was my phase and then obviously big room then became bounce <laughs> you just go through all the stages yeah. and but yeah no, very nice. Now, how old were you when you, you first, like, do you have a memory of first remembering music, like, growing up? Um, yes. My mum used to always sing, like, old songs to me, like, Dancing in the Moonlight and stuff like that. Fire. Like, yeah, just, like, always singing. My mum's all about music, so yeah. um, she used to write album albums when she was younger, yeah. um, jazz and Latin. Yeah, very nice. So a lot of Latin music and um, yeah, I was just, I've just been around music my whole life and obviously doing piano and keyboard from the age of 12 or 13, 11. Oh, I don't even know, but yeah. I did piano for a long time. So obviously I was doing a lot of classical stuff and um, yeah, obviously with the choirs and um, musicals, you know, you have your Mikado and you have yeah. all different genres, but yeah, I just, I feel like... I, everything has influenced me yeah. and it's hard to like say, Oh, what song do you first remember? Or what, what song makes you like think back to when you first fell in love with music? It's just everything. Yeah. I can't Yeah. every, every song that I've ever listened to always That's fair. has just played a part in my life. That's fair. Now I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you've brought up your mother. Yes. Because for those that don't know, <laughs> <laughs> Selena's mom runs the greatest Italian restaurant ever, and I didn't even realize it was uh, it was her that owned it and ran it. It was only until T rocked up today with the car. It says <laughs> spaghetti and jazz. So if you get down to us, spaghetti and jazz in Rubina, tell them T sent you. Um, yes, <laughs> it, is, uh, it is a vibe. It's like you're stepping into any restaurant from The Sopranos. Everything's like that old red white Italian. And there is jazz, obviously. My mum sings, yes. Yeah, it is a vibe. Date night, every <laughs> night. If you want to take someone special or get a big table, call them up and do like the feast with the big <laughs> bowls of pasta. <laughs> not that do I've, it. Not that I've been. Like, I'm not trying to... You have this is many not, times. By the way, this is not a sponsored message. Yet. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, obviously you've played heaps of shows. Uh, are there any that really stick with you? Oh, 
business? Many, yeah. yes. Recently, well, before COVID. It's just crazy how fast the past six months have gone. Yeah. But before COVID, I think um, I had a bunch of amazing shows that, yeah, I will remember forever. Definitely playing um, before Green Velvet down in Melbourne. Oh. Um, that was a vibe. Was that? Was that at pla- no? XC fifty four. Okay, yeah, yeah. And it was the first time I've been in that club as well. So that was insane, and um, just all the recent like shows I was playing with Michael Bibby and all that. Um, yeah. I think those definitely make a mark on my career because they're inspirations to me, and I've worked yeah. so hard for what I do, and so it's very rewarding to me to be able to open for certain artists like that. That I just go like. I love them. Yeah, like, the sets, their music. It's yeah. just, you know, it's amazing to actually meet those people and be in their presence because, you know, you're at home downloading their music and yeah. it's it's crazy. But yeah, definitely the start of 2020, I had some awesome um, gigs and at the end of 2019. But through 2019, my whole genre and branding was different okay. to where i'm at now yeah. so i was in the whole like uk base yeah. scene for like i don't know eight months or so yeah. and i really enjoyed that yeah. i don't even know how that even i don't know how that happened but i just got into like the heavier wubs and i was like yep wub wub that's me i love it <laughs> and then <laughs> wub, wub, that yeah legit me. i was always like wub wub hashtag wub wub on everything oh really i got tattoo, um wub wub tattooed on my finger it gone but it's gone definitely too many sick beats spinning yeah. on those decks <laughs> just sweating off <laughs> but no um yeah i just wub, as wub. i as i said like music evolves yeah and, everything progresses and and i evolved with it and then i just thought I'm not that I got over it, but there was a point where I just wanted to test myself and I packed my bags and moved to Melbourne and changed everything yeah. and didn't play one wub wub. <laughs> that was it. And I was like, I'm just going to live in Melbourne. I'm going to immerse myself in the culture and go hundred percent. It was just so inviting to me, like yeah. the culture, the food, like the people, the style, and then the music just topped it all off. It, not that it's not like, like that here. Yeah. But because oh, no, I, I understand, I moved down to Melbourne like five years ago. Yeah. I lived in South Bank, like you were saying, yeah. right there. It's amazing. It's just a vibe. Yeah. And there's so many opportunities, be that in the city, Fitzroy, yeah. and you can go down to St. Kilda. Like it's just. 100%. Melbourne's a vibe. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's good fun down there. 100%. Now, like you said, um, you're really happy with it, like when you play with Green Velvet and BB and yeah. stuff like that. Are there any times in those gigs where you kind of took a breath and you looked around and you were like. All the time. Yeah. All the time, like, especially, like, being just in their presence and just saying, like, introducing yourself before you play or whatnot. It's just, yeah. oh, my gosh, I'm really here. Like, it's it's crazy because I'm – I live in the moment and that's something that I think a lot of people don't do. 100%. So when I'm on stage or, like, when I'm going to a gig, I'm, I, I feel so genuinely happy because I'm like, I'm doing this. I love this. Yeah. It's just different, not like I'm going to go do this. And I've just got a really different attitude about shows and stuff compared to when I've like first started out. Cause yeah. I was like, it was all new being a DJ. I didn't, I didn't know where I wanted to be. I've never like kind of had that attitude of, I want to play on the main stage of Tomorrowland. I want to do this and that. It was, yeah. it was more so I'm, I just, I mix music. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And then people say, what's your big goal? Do you want to, do you want to play like, um, like Tomorrowland, yeah. everyone just uses that as yeah. like a reference. And yeah. I'm just like, no, yeah. like, of course it'd be cool. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But like, that's not my goal. There's yeah. no end goal. I'm genuinely so happy just doing what I, what I do. It's unreal. So it's just like my end goal. There's no real end goal. Like I, I love what I do and that's that. And if I can keep doing it, then it's just sharing the vibe and meeting yeah. new people. I think the best thing out of it is meeting like-minded people yeah. and the memories that I make. Yeah. hundred percent. Amazing. Now, uh, you spoke about when you were growing up, choir. Yeah. Do you have a little voice on you? Or is that just like everyone <laughs> growing up in high school and they're, or like primary school and they're like... Um, I mean, I like to sing. Yeah, well, that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll hear some stuff in some new tracks coming out. But um, yeah, my mum's a singer, so I feel like I definitely have a bit of... Yeah. something from my yeah, mother <laughs> but no, you know unreal. as i said i don't like talking about myself no no i well I understand you'll hear 100%. it one day maybe i'll yeah. get on the stage and i'll just bust out a tune yeah. and if not we'll just get your mum up there yes she- yeah she's she loves that she would probably be waiting by the side to be like 
for the feet. Call me out. For the, like, the feet mumsy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, featuring mum. <laughs> now, uh, you did also say you played uh, a bit of piano and keyboard. Yeah, so piano, keyboard, I did all the um, assessments and all that. Like, oh, I yeah. really yeah. was wanting to get somewhere with um, keyboard. And then I don't even know what happened. Like, I was doing it for so long and then... I think oh, I got into hip hop dancing yeah. and then I joined a hip hop crew. It was crazy. Like my yeah. journey through music has always been like I did play the flute and then I did piano and keyboard and like the, I was very strict on it yeah. with um, learning all that wow. um, because I went to a private school as yeah. well. So it was just like just how I grew up yeah. and then musicals and all that and choir and blah, blah, blah. And then I got into dancing yeah, I think just music has just been... Always a constant. Yeah, yeah, whether it be singing, choirs, dancing, and then it just kind of formed into one. And now I literally do... All of those things. All of those things in one. And yeah. it's just like maybe that, that it's all meant to be. 100%. It's all meant to be. <laughs> 100%. No, I was speaking to our Lotnik two weeks ago, and obviously he's like professionally trained classical pianist. Yeah. And I was like, bro, that's so wild. Like, Crazy, hey. It's just another world. And when you're young, you just don't appreciate it because a lot of times... hundred percent. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so glad I did that. Yeah. Because like I sit in Ableton um, and I know what you I'm know doing. what's next. Oh, I know like how to, you know, do chords yeah. and stuff like that. And it's just like, I'm very grateful for learning those things in yeah. school and when I was younger because like obviously I didn't think that I was going to be doing this. No, no so. not at all worked out in my favor <laughs> i think the most i got on piano was like the pink panther and like three blind mice <laughs> and i can play holy grail now no way yeah i'm proud of you someone has to be <laughs> <laughs> now uh talking about you playing gigs obviously you've been to a lot of shows as well yeah um, a lot of festivals things like that yeah. are there any moments that you've seen artists and you've kind of been like oh, vibe yeah. <laughs> what playing or like no, just going what Watching an artist, though, you mean? Yeah. Um, could be yeah. an artist, could be a band, could be anyone. There's been everywhere I go. I'm just amazed. Yeah. You know, like music to me is just something that I can't get enough of. So wherever I am, if I see, if I hear music, my eyes will directly go. Yeah. So, yeah, of course, if I'm at a festival or an event, I'm always, always listening yeah. and all like everything catches my eye. But music is the one thing that's just like takes over everything. Yeah. So. I don't know, one one that stood out. See, one for me is like Childish Gambino a few years ago at Splendor. Like, yeah. just like the whole show, the production, him killing it. Yeah. Like, it's just, like, I'm just sitting there being like... <sighs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Actually, I attended Hard Festival, run yeah. by Destructo, um, and I got pulled up on stage for that. Like, I was just attending, and yeah. this was like, I don't know, I was like 19 or 20. And I was like in the whole like night bass scene. This is a bit before I was like a resident at the Met. Yeah. Um, where I kind of really grew into like a different sound. And I was playing around surface still and having like so much fun and loving what I did. I was at university as well. So, you know, it'd be very, um, I wouldn't be going out much and attending yeah. things unless I was playing because I had to study a lot and I had to focus on my music. And obviously I'd be so tired after like yeah. six hours of, a night and then the next six hours and then straight into uni and like yeah. i can't believe i actually did that yeah so when you look back at that stuff like <laughs> i don't wild, know how hey? i did that <laughs> but i did it so i think like yeah i always look back and think about those moments but i also think god i've had some fun but yeah, yeah one that sticks out to me is hard that was awesome i was front and center and i just remember saying him going who the fuck wants to jump up As on in stage college. um uh, Destructo. Oh, Destructo. Sorry, yeah, yeah sorry. and he wants to jump up on stage, and then I'm like, I put my hand up. I'm like, me. Like, I bet it wasn't that calm. Just... No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like, oh me. It was like, yes. <laughs> and then I got pulled up, and I just remember just being on stage, and I was just like, this is crazy. I've yeah. never been. I've never done anything like that. In front of that many people, and yeah. And but I was just dancing, and I'm like standing right behind him, playing to a massive crowd, and it's just like, wow, like so inspiring i yeah. think that's a like a moment i'll never forget but obviously like you would have danced in front of a pretty big crowd with the hip-hop trio the group you were in oh <laughs> um <laughs> oh, what was, i don't even remember our yes, name there was a name yes. there was a name i can't even remember i was i was 17 or 16 and we competed in east yeah. in a uh, east in broad beach yeah. and um 
they had to like do the same thing, escort me in, escort me out, because like the rest of my dance crew. I bet that felt pretty cool, but like... no, I wanted to be there <laughs> yeah. for everything. Like especially when I used to play Envy, and like my set would be over, like I'd have to leave and be like, see you guys yeah. when I'm enjoy the vibe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Mom's but out. but yeah, no, that's that's I can't even fathom that. So hats off to you for being being able to do that at 17 it was fun yeah it's cool i guess it kind of made me a lot more mature about the whole scene as well you know sitting back and realizing like it was a job you know i didn't get into it at 18 where it was just like i want to be a dj i'm gonna go yeah no it was like okay i'm I'm going to work (laughs) driving driving in set the decks up go home and think okay now i've got envy tomorrow night like there was no party party for me and yeah. then when i turned 18 i was like oh let's incorporate the party now and then yeah it just like it was a wild time for like two three years and then i was like okay i'm gonna produce music i'm gonna take this bit more seriously yeah. like I, i've had my not that i've had my fun but like but kind of i still have fun you know yeah. what i mean like i love it so it's always going to be fun but yeah. it was more so let's like really re- like brand this yeah. and like see what you can do with the whole music thing. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Now, uh, obviously, with COVID and all that stuff going on at the moment, there's no real shows being played. Yeah. Bit of a downer. What do you What do you miss most about not being able to play? The vibe and meeting, yeah. meeting new people, like-minded people, and just connecting, I think. Yeah. Like, I love intimate shows over anything. I love being able to play. And, you know, when you play, like, an actual tune and you just look out and people are going like fuck yeah you know yeah. what i mean you're yeah. just like i think that's the real excitement for me just knowing that they're feeling what i'm feeling yeah that that's it really yeah. it's just the whole and mixing obviously like i really enjoy taking people on a journey yeah but um i think it's just the vibe and connecting with people yeah that's my love for djing yeah very much so i think everyone's kind of been saying like the community is probably the biggest thing they miss yeah and it's not so much like seeing your best friends every week no it's not it's it's like, it's literally meeting new people too and just being able to connect through a song that's playing through some awesome speakers yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean yeah yeah 100 <laughs> percent. now uh now we're getting in the the feels side of it yeah is there any songs uh and obviously it doesn't have to be music you play or anything like that that really kind of get you that you maybe listen to in your downtime or a quiet time yeah i like as i said i love listening to um flume still i always have his mixtape on repeat yeah um zoo is a big winner for me zoo's mixtapes um but a song that gets me in the feels teenage crime oh do you remember that adrian lux not at all (laughs) such a tune yeah i remember like the first time i heard it i was driving i wasn't driving i was underage (laughs) or couldn't didn't even have my peas um but i was with my mom and my stepdad and we were cruising somewhere down south and i just remember the song came on yeah and we're in like our convertible so the the roof was down i just remember like doing this like in the air and then the song just kept repeating to me and ever since then i just have that memory of me going (laughs) and i think it's just a vibe you know feeling like free and happy and yeah, that's that's a song that gets me in the feels that I could listen on repeat for a while. Yeah. Also, um, Adventure Clubs Crave You. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That gets me in the feels as well. But it's so funny you bring up like Adrian Lux. I just remember that film clip like so vividly. Yeah, and it was like before that was really it was one of the few songs that were coming out commercially as dance music. Yeah. And that it'd have a video clip and stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah. at the start of you know when Channel V was still a thing and MTV. <laughs> Like, and it was just, I just remember the film clip and obviously like the song was just unbelievable, but I think it, it was like an all demographics song. It wasn't just like a banger. Yeah. Kids would listen to or. Yeah. It was just. I As just, I said, like when I think about the song, I just think about the memory that I had of doing that. And it's just, yeah. it brings back the feels of everything. <laughs> just the tone of like the key of the song that. Yeah. It's just like one of those ones where you're just like. <laughs> yeah. I definitely feel like Zoo as well. All his tracks are just so in the fields yeah crazy yeah i don't mind a bit of zoo eh? it's something about i oh know it's just so it's like low end it's like but it's sens- not it's, <laughs> re- it's real weird low end i don't know yeah like i don't know it's, it's like it's just real groovy audio but ASMR. Slow. yeah <laughs> i agree <laughs> yeah like, wow <laughs> true yeah it's like every every uh 
every VST on it's just like an ASMR simulator <laughs> that's like turning the drums into like that real life. Yeah, and it kind of suits any mood as well. Yeah. You know, you know how you have some songs that can really set a vibe for you if you're looking for like something to put on to suit your mood. Yeah. I feel like Zoo's that type of vibe. If you put on, you just go with what the vibe is from the song. Yeah. So if you're sad and you put a Zoo song on, like it will kind of make you feel sadder, but it doesn't really make much of an impact because the song's so nice. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it. Like it's just when I listen to songs by Zoo, I'm just like, you're a genius. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, how? Yeah. And then, yeah, I think I think that's just something that is important to me when you can listen to music and hear the story behind it, and th- and you think of how they created it, and that's when that's when I know it's a good song. When yeah. I can sit back and think, oh my goodness, like how much work has he put into this? Blah blah blah. But yeah, those type of tunes are vibey. <laughs> no, I, I right in the feels. Completely agree. Okay, now uh, we've come to one of my favourite parts of the show, the Bop It Challenge. Now, T, uh, this is the Silly Sausage. Um, everyone's done it every week and the high score is going to be the winner. Have you seen something like this before? <laughs> no? <Nah? laughs> well, here's your chance. There's that. Now. All right. The high score is... Here we go. Took me to start. This is a bad angle, guys. Get me. With me. Get me. Shake me. Oh. <laughs> Why doesn't the shake work when I do you're it? You're like up and down, not like sideways. But it's, I'm going Took again. Me. Okay, you're right. All right, one more, one more. I'm not the worst. (laughs) You're the worst. (laughs) You're the worst. You did that and they thought you shook it because you picked it up. Would you like one more? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) All right. T. I know I'm the worst, okay. I can't wait to put up the highlights from this game at the end of the season. Oh, God, it's going to be that. <laughs> oh, like, everyone was the same. Yeah, no, oh, really? Yeah, no one. Everyone, oh, thank God. Yeah. So no one's ever seen that before? No, no, like, I, like, I. No, I mean, just... like, when they've tried it, they've. Oh, no, no, no one's, one's come been... on the show and been like, I've... silly oh, sausage. Yeah. I'm the best at this game. Yeah. No, you're the worst. <laughs> yeah. Don't give me that thing again. <laughs> no, you're the worst. Oh, oh God. Now. If I was to go out to your car, even though it's technically not your car at the moment. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> and we were to turn on the radio or plug in your phone. Chris Dussie. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what we come on? 100%. Yeah. I'm vibing that minimal deep tech right now. Yeah. All the Piv record tunes. Been hanging out with Camp Paprika too much. <laughs> <laughs> like, they are the homies. <laughs> they are. Massive shout out. Shout out. out. <laughs> and after midnight, the boys. Hey, for sure. Uh, did you get a chance to go to the, uh, the warehouse, right? No, I didn't get to go to that one, unfortunately. I was pretty sad about that. It was a, it was a good time. Don't tell me I heard. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good time. But, you know, COVID safe, guys. Just letting everyone know they were checking it, temperatures at the door. They were getting addresses and all those vibes. And everyone was 1.5. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Great. They just, it was such a vibe. <laughs> but anyway, talking about the Chris Dusty stuff, it's like, yeah, definitely been hanging out with uh, that crew a bit, hey? Yeah, like I've definitely been into the whole um, minimal tech and deep scene yeah. for a while, but it's nice to be around people that are really on the same level of yeah, what you definitely. like. And I feel like the past couple of months, um, I've really, I kind of lost myself through covid and found myself again that's right yeah but i think you always should keep that in mind that there's always room to keep evolving and that it's okay that if you feel like you've lost yourself again do you know what i mean like of course it's bound to happen sometimes in life or you know you lose interest in something or you don't know what you want to do anymore i just think through covid um i kind of felt that way recently and i had a lot of things going on and you know, had a bit of a breakdown and I deleted my, I signed out of my socials and, um, you know, just cut a lot of toxic energy out of my life. And 
um, put myself in the right place by surrounding myself with the right energy and yeah. I'm just back on track now. Well, that's all that matters. So, yeah, I think definitely um, the right energy and being around the right people, like-minded people, yeah. surround yourself with good people, yeah, I, I think – Helps. I think it's good, like everything with that whole crew, both crews up from your right end. Yeah, Paprika, like, like you said, the minimal tech, kind yeah. of like I don't know, discoy kind of some of the sounds. It's, it's everything. Yeah, all but, that just underground, deep, groovy yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just enjoy. It. It's cool to be able to like hang out with them, and they're all like playing that music, and it's all good. But you're hearing stuff that's interesting that yeah, you haven't course. heard. And yep. you're, going like, you're learning. Yeah, you be surround yeah. yourself where you can learn and yeah. talk about music, and you know talk about things that aren't about people yeah, and just enjoy the moment. And yeah, it, yeah I just, I can see that um, where I'm at right now and who, who I'm spending time with and what I'm around is definitely put an impact on my soul. And I'm just yeah. really happy. No, that's sick. That's so, what it's yeah. all about. hundred percent. And uh, it's good to, you, it, as I said before, it's good to lose yourself because you come back better than ever. Yeah. Well, sometimes it helps you find the real you. hundred no. percent. But I feel like you're always evolving and there's always room for improvement in certain like aspects of your life and yeah. certain areas. So always take it as a positive when you feel down because you can't appreciate the highs without the lows. It's deep. A hundred percent. But I've just been through a lot recently and like my whole life, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not one to be like, oh, I've been through this, poor me, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Everyone goes through things. Yeah. So as long as you can like take positive out of every situation, yeah. especially like creative souls. Yeah. Yeah, you, can you take the lows. Put it to hey. your advantage. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's right. It shapes you. That's, it does shape you. 100%. Well, I'm glad that um, I'm glad that you're coming out of the COVID with a bit of light. Yes. That's positive. Well, you, I don't know how people can go through this whole situation and just be negative. Yeah. You know, my mum was saying to me, like, it was pretty cute. My mum and I had a little chat and she just said, oh, people um, need to think about, you know, how many, how many families right now have come together and had a uh, dinner at the table with their 100%. family, you know, you can point out different types of positive aspects of COVID. But at the end of the day, it's nice to have a reset. Yeah. It's, it's nice to have a break yeah. from everything. At the start, I was like, Oh, it's, I don't want to stop. I, like I want to get back into the shows. The first few months were heavy. And yeah. now I'm like, this has been really good. You know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. Obviously it's unfortunate for some businesses like, everyone's like well not everyone but a lot of people are struggling yeah but if you can still find the positives yeah you you need to you have to none of this is all just negative yeah everything happens for a reason so it is what it is and if you can't see it then open your open your eyes a bit more you know sit back and relax and as i said living in the moment you will appreciate things more and you will find the positive things that's very true you'll always find a silver lining 100 percent. now uh what kind of music you're vibing at the moment, you personally? What's on the what's on the T Spotify list if she had one? <laughs> um, I'm really vibing all the minimal deep tech right now. I yeah. just think it's suitable for right now. Obviously, we're not you know banging out club shows and yeah. going to the clubs every weekend and whatnot. But um, I definitely feel like minimal deep tech right now is my vibe. Yeah. Yeah, because in Melbourne, I really transformed into that techno scene. Yeah. Not that it wasn't up here, but being down there, I was just around it more. Yeah. And then when I came back, I just feel like it kind of like wasn't so heavy and kind of slowed down to a little groovy yeah. groove. And then I just got into a, like a routine of always putting on um, back-to-back sets of all the boys from the UK and yeah. like the Solid Grooves um, label and all that. Yeah. Obviously, I like sets like that, but I definitely think um, Piv Records and anything like with a nice groove where you can be taken on a journey is yep. suitable for any time. Yep. But I've also been listening to a lot of podcasts as well. I've yep. been replacing some music with um, audio podcasts and I've been reading a lot as well. Yeah, nice. So what are you just reading training the, the brain. Um, the Book of Happiness, How to Train Your Subconscious. I just finished that. Yeah. Um, the Values Factor and... There's a few others I've got at home, but yeah, just all about the mind yeah, and yeah. Um, podcasts about, you know, training, how to train your thoughts. Yeah. And yeah, because I feel like I'm more in control now with those type of things. And through COVID, that's something I wanted to focus on more because obviously I had a, a lot more time on my hands yeah. as well. 
So that's sick. I, yeah, I love to read. So no, that's exciting. And so you're reading what, like two or three books at once at the moment? No, I oh, I pick up one book and then I'll start it, but it it has to capture me, and I can finish a book in like two three days. That's that's what I like to do because yeah. then it's like. Boom, it's in my brain. I've done that book and I feel so great when I finish a book. I get to the last page and I'm like, I did it. Yeah. And then it's like, next, what's next? It's good. <laughs> no, it's solid effort. That's very nice. Thank you. <laughs> now, uh, if you were to have dinner mm -hmm. and you got to choose who was at the table, you and three other people, oh, wow. who would those people be? And they don't have to be musicians. They can be anyone. They can be family members. They can be... Well, I eat with my family all the time. <laughs> Spitting and down. Shout out. Then I said that yet. <laughs> um, I'm paid in meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> paid in pizzas. Um, that's a tough one on the spot there. Mm. It's okay. I mean, you can take time. You don't have to rush. I'm trying to think. Well, I kind of do. <laughs> um, it's crazy because it's like, it's not about who I'd want to sit at the dinner table with. And it's more so like what I would say to certain people. Okay. When I'm, you know what I mean? Yeah, let's keep going. No, I, like <laughs> I don't know. I definitely think I'd like to sit down with AC Slater and yeah. have a good chat about just life yeah. in general, because yeah. he's been a very big inspiration in my whole career. Yep. Um, not only the fact that he got me well, listening to his music, got me into like down that path, yes. but, um, more so the fact that, you know, he has his label mm. and his, his own big brand that started as a small brand. Like that's, that's how I compare, you know, um, I've got a friend down in Sydney who runs all friends, yep. which is something that I see that could turn into something like night base shout yeah. out to my friend justin who runs yeah. that and like camp paprika you know what i mean like yeah. that's why i'm so like interested in just mingling with these people because yeah. it's so it's so inspiring being around people that have these visions and goals not only just being a dj yeah. do you yeah. know what i mean yeah like they want to they want to grow. They want to have a family out of this brand. They want to have a record label. They want to bring people on board. And it's just awesome. That's why AC Slater, I think, is a big inspiration for me. Not um, music-wise, but business-wise. Yeah. So, yeah, like if I could sit at the table with one person and have like a pro big DNM, it would be yeah. AC Slater. So maybe he but, could take the other spots and you could just have a giant conversation with him. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's way easier than you having to think of others. Yeah. Well, I can't think of any others right now. We'll chuck mum in there. I talk to mum all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Now, uh, I know you said before, uh, talking about you'd be able to listen to a certain song for like on repeat. Yeah. What is the song that you could listen to if you were on a desert island for the rest of your life and that was the only song you had? Oh, there's a song that I can't get out of my head. It's called, you know, House Arrest. Yes. Yeah. Obviously, it's only recent or well, not. Well, this year, I think yeah. it was released this year. Um, that's just a song that I can't stop repeating to myself. Really? Yeah. I, I have, I've had it on repeat for like at least two hours worth of driving recently. Oh, really? Like I just don't oh, check. Like, like actual repeat? Actual repeat. <laughs> Not like different remixes. No. Like. So we'd go next and I'd be like back, back <laughs> every time. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's, I don't know why. It's just so groovy. But that... That's if you were to ask right now, yeah. but an overall song, can't put this on me. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's really hard to think of overall because every song has made an impact on my life. So yeah. I just, I love music. I can't express that enough. <laughs> just, just <music. laughs> I just love music. I love tunes. I just, anything, anything. Now, I'm um, not picky. Not, to, not I'm not picky when we listen to music and yeah, I'm just, I'm, I don't really, I'm not the type of person to be like, okay, put this on or yeah. put that on. Obviously if I'm with like a group of friends and you know, like-minded people and we're talking about music, I'm always interested in saying, listen to this. Like I've got a track to show you, but yeah. in general, like I'm not picky. I love music. I can understand where it just, where it's all coming from and just depends who I'm around as well yeah, nice. and where I'm going the time. Yeah. 
music is suited to every di- like you got to be careful with specific songs because I definitely feel like when you're listening to music with certain people it really sets the vibe yeah and I find like when I'm around some friends and I play like tech house or minimal tech or something deep and underground with like no lyrics and I'm with different people they just go what's this put on you know some R&B and so but I'll still vibe to that I'll I'll happily change it you know what I mean (laughs) no I understand as I said that's why like I vibe the energy that I'm around right now because you know it really brings out the best in me and like when I'm around the right music and the right people you get 110% to Lena yeah definitely and then when you obviously go back to working on music you're inspired by all the moments and things you've done that's it you get your inspiration from well I get my inspiration and creativity from memories yeah. creating new memories pretty yeah. much that's why shows and and playing shows and touring was such a big impact on my music and so now I think it's a good setback because I haven't played and played anywhere recently for the past however many months yeah. so it's it, it will be exciting to get back on the road and see what happens yeah, with exactly. my music as I said like I'm not strict house and techno it just depends where i'm playing who i'm playing to the time it is what it is always evolving always 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 100 percent. people think it's so simple it's not it's not not, (laughs) now uh can you recall at all the first record or like song you purchased growing up oh my goodness or like cd or like oh cd oh yeah like it like could be anything black eyed peaks yeah yeah which one (laughs) The the one with my homes on it. Yeah, girl. <laughs> and um, like Justin Timberlake's. Senorita. The, dis- the disco ball one. Oh, What's yeah. I one? love. I can't even. Future Sounds or something like yeah, that. Future yeah, Future Sounds. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I'm bringing sex to bed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's a throwback. Yeah, that is a massive throwback. Um, and so I was speaking to someone. What was it? Just it's funny you've said both those artists. Sometimes I get a bit carried away and I like play songs that I probably shouldn't. Yeah. But I just, in your sets. Yeah, and yeah. I just do it because I'm like, this is such Spice a Spice it up, have banger. some fun. So like I play Senorita sometimes yeah. by Justin Timberlake just for the bit in the middle where it's like, I oh, know what something's heating up and everyone can like sing yeah. it. But then my other go-to is London Bridge by Fergie. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> I used to love all that. <laughs> and, and people are like, man, this is so not your vibe. I'm like, I know, but... I enjoy it and people will get up and dance Yeah, and then you can kind of like take them away. You know from, how to read a crowd. Yeah. But like you can take them away from that and introduce them to something like new yeah. because you've convinced them like, Oh, you played this. It's all yeah. good. But just, Oh man, that sample in London bridge just ruins me. Like, the, <laughs> burr, burr, and you're just like, like I full looked it up, found the like old song from the seventies. It's yeah. from, and it's like the whole song's created around like 0.5 of a sound in this other song. Yeah. Which is, I find most songs these days take a lot of that. Yeah. Um, taking little samples from way older tracks and people can still recognize and yeah. you know, they bring in a fat beat and it's just like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> fat beat. you know what i'm talking about i do 100 percent. now um what's in the works you got a little some little things coming up you got some music or... um actually yeah i've had some really exciting news um a couple days ago i can't really sh- share it i don't know if i'm allowed to share right, well, it don't, well but... don't share it make sure you get on all the <laughs> socials that she's going to unlock in the next few months and yeah, in she'll the next have all couple the information weeks. on there next couple weeks so we don't want to give away any secrets yeah but she has secrets so that's what's important <laughs> so we'll keep you on like the edge it's exciting that's cool very exciting something that i'm i can't wait to actually share that's rad so yeah and also music as well so yeah it's, it's all music related but some few a different like thing from each yes yeah, you, you'll see you'll see oh that's real cool exciting yeah. times we'll make sure you jump on all their socials and stuff shortly actually you can still technically jump on to, to yeah, the music's uh, insta and follow them all and then uh, I'm sure I'll be back on soon. I just back. mental break. Yeah, you know, I, social media can be so so draining, draining yeah. and negative. People aren't living their real lives on there, and no. I just thought I'm not like you're not like that in real life. You know what I mean? I just yeah. without it, it just it's great. I'm we live in the moment yeah. way more. Yeah. And like the first week without social media, like I was picking up my phone. I was like, oh yeah, hard. Yeah, so true. And now I'm just like. Oh wait, I think I left my phone somewhere. Like yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and I know now that I feel 
Like I'm 100% living in the moment. Yeah. Well, instead of scrolling through a feed, you're reading books about self-discovery and how yeah. to attack life. 100%. Like that is so it's much good. better than, oh, cool. Double tap. Double tap. It's very, very, very negative it's... and toxic. I mean, not saying social media is so bad, but I kind no, of am. It <laughs> pl- no, but it has its place. Yeah. In, in Especially in our industry. Yeah. That's but... what I mean. I have to, I've always been a part of social media because I've, I've had to be, yeah. you know what I mean? So it was a big, it took a lot for me to yeah. kind of get off social media. Yeah. Not not saying like I'm addicted, I need to get off, but no, it was like not. just, <laughs> <laughs> I had to just take a break because yeah. no. everything I saw was negative. People saying negative things yeah. and COVID and all the, everything right yeah. now. So yeah, I definitely will be back. We'll be back with announcements to make. <laughs> Very big announcement. Um, so. I think, well, like, I'll make a major announcement for you. Go. I believe that you should have your listening party at Spaghetti and Jazz. <laughs> My listening party? <laughs> yeah, for, like, when you release new music. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we'll set up a proper, like, rave. <laughs> that would be a vibe. Pizza's on tap. <laughs> yeah, obviously, Espresso like... Espresso martinis on tap. Yeah, obviously, like, personal reference. You don't have to take any of this in, but... Yep. I would definitely I'll keep that in there. mind. Not um, sponsored. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not sponsored. Yet. Um, now, T, thank you so much uh, for coming on the show today. That went faster. We done. Yeah. Wow. Unless there's anything else you really like to add, <laughs> no, you're more than welcome. I just enjoyed talking about music. I could do this for hours. Well, I think when you know your craft and you know what to chat about, yeah, it's very easy. A hundred percent. You know, just feels like home. Always talking about music just comes so naturally everything well, to do with music well, playing case, dancing I'll give you one more question why go. not let's go do you have any advice for any up-and-coming artists or producers looking to kind of go from that bedroom setup to the next setup yeah i mean i have a lot of advice in general for people um just in general with life give it just to honestly be you and just stay positive no matter what but don't have an end goal. I just think don't have an end goal because yeah. what happens if you reach that goal? Yeah. Or what happens? It's like, obviously, if you reach that goal, you might make another, but like, then that's not your end goal. Yeah. And what if you don't get there? You know, live in the moment, yeah. enjoy the process, trust the process, enjoy the journey and be grateful. Yeah, nice. That's honestly like, I learned a lot from practicing gratitude. Yeah. And good things come I like that. to those who do. Well, I'm pretty sure we've just made the bumper stickers and the t-shirts for your next release out of every <laughs> statement you just said then. What is it? Oh, be what? grateful for others. Be, you know, yeah. live in the moment. Yeah. Tea. Tea. <laughs> be grateful. Tea, wub, wub. <laughs> oh Never again. God. Get off I, my finger. I think from now on, like, I'm probably just going to call you wub, wub when Don't. I say Don't. That is in the past. That is, well, I mean... Who knows? I might bring little Wub Wub back. No, like I just think Wub Wub to be a cool nickname. <laughs> it is my nickname. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, that's oh. funny. Well, guys, uh, thank you very much uh, for tuning in today. T has been an absolutely fantastic guest. Make sure you jump onto her Spotify. Check out all of her tracks. Plus, jump onto her socials. She's going to have heaps of new things coming out soon. Do you have anyone you want to thank, T? Thank you for having oh, me. thank you. And a big shout out to everyone in my life right now really making a positive impact and everyone that's been there for me and everyone that supports me. Love that. Wub wub. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. out. Once again, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, have a radical night and we will see you soon. <laughs>